Hello, my name is Dr. Kayla Clark and I am an intuitive empath with a highly sensitive nervous system. I am extremely passionate about bridging the gap between the mind and the body, the science and the soul and helping highly sensitive leaders step into their health and recalibrate their nervous system to our modern world. Did you know that empaths and people with highly sensitive nervous systems are more prone to burning out and being overwhelmed than those who don't have that? You probably could have guessed this and in this video I'm going to talk about three of the reasons why. These reasons have to do with our innate biology and neurobiology. We're actually more sensitive to dopamine than the general population. This is actually the first reason why we are more prone to burnout. The second reason is that when we are more uh, prone to hyperstimulation, our nervous systems are easily triggered and we're constantly existing in a state of fight, flight, or freeze, which is not sustainable long-term, ending up in burnout. The third reason is we are emotional empaths as the nature of what we are we absorb energy from others and the reality is a lot of people are straight up stressed out and anxious and so we take this on so i'm going to dive into these in a little bit more detail and hopefully this will help you understand how you can protect yourself against overwhelm and burnout so the first reason i was mentioning why empaths or people with highly sensitive nervous systems are mo more prone to burning out is just to do with our innate neurobiology for whatever reason, our nervous systems developed in a way where we are more sensitive to dopamine than the general, gen, general population. So reminder, there's 20% of us who, I, who are wired with this highly sensitive system. Now, the problem is our modern world obviously is very geared towards the secretion of dopamine. We see this everywhere. Our attention spans are so short because they figured out how to uh, reduce them and give us just the right amount of hits that we need, like that like on Facebook. Um, even the, the way that songs or, or rhythms or commercials are structured have to do with uh, releasing that dopamine and getting us hooked on things. And so for us highly sensitive people, we are more sensitive to this dopamine, meaning that we are often very hyperstimulated. So this is why we feel better often. We need to recharge. We need to be alone. We might identify as introverted. Uh, even if we don't identify as introverted, it will be important for us to be mindful of our energy and all of the stuff going on around us because it's just in our wiring. So if you notice yourself being really hyperstimulated, this is part of the reason why. A good thing to do here for us empaths is to, like I said, just remove yourself from that stimulation. Be really mindful of uh, just engaging in modern technology um, we are also more prone to addictions and things like that because of this because we are used to all of this hyper secretion of dopamine so there's a whole road that we could go down that has to do with this or offshoots of this but neurobiologically we are just primed to be more sensitive to the dopamine meaning to hyper stimulated nervous system second reason why we're more prone to burnout has to do with uh, an offshoot of that neurobiological predisposition to dopamine hypersensitivity is that basically when we are being constantly stimulated this form of stress translates into our nervous system uh, as energy and we are more primed to be triggered and move into a trauma response so this integrates and will totally depend on each person's upbringing, their own story, their own biology, genetics, etc. But in general, because we're more sensitive to things and, and to the input of uh, stuff coming in, our nervous system is going to just have a threshold that is lower to be primed towards overwhelm and burnout. And so what this looks like is many people existing in a fight, flight, or freeze response. I'm not going to go into too much detail here about the freeze response, but essentially that happens when we, when our bodies uh, are almost in overwhelm, they're almost in burnout. The freeze response is the play dead response. So our nervous system has hit a point where it's like, you're going to, you're going to burn out soon. You need to pull the emergency brake. You may or not, you may or may not listen to it, but this freeze response is almost like a state of detachment. It's not a good place to be. Wherever you are, if you're existing in this state of constant nervous system activation, you're more likely to be triggered easily. You might notice this on your day to day. You might be triggered often, easily um, by certain energies, by things, by things you don't even know. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this uh, hyper stimulation leads to a lower threshold of tolerance. What you have to do here is calibrate how, where you're existing on your, on your nervous system level, if you're in fight, flight, freeze, if you're always primed to go, and you have to match this with uh, your, your stimulation and you have to create a sense of safety. So it's essentially like talking to your nervous system and it's very primal how, how it understands this. 
I'm gonna make lots of other videos and there's lots of content on my Instagram on how to actually ground yourself through this process, but some of the best ways are to actually physically activate the vagus nerve, which is the nerve that dictates that play dead response. So that nerve physically connects our brains and it runs down through our throat and into our stomach. So one of the best ways to do this, as the yogis knew, was to deep belly breathe. This actually pulls on the diaphragm and will activate that nerve. Another way is to do chanting, singing mantra, again, physiologically, because that nerve is running through the throat and vibrating. Vibrating by chanting, talking, singing will, will activate it. Okay, so being mindful of this connection and the threshold, we have to be really careful about keeping ourselves calm and restful and lowering our threshold, keeping us calibrated. Number three is because we are emotional empaths. That is the definition of empathy is being able to tune into other people's energies, emotions, and the stuff that they are going through. Unfortunately, because we are not the major majority, a lot of us weren't taught how to understand this language, and so we have really poor boundaries. This means that we absorb energy, emotion, and feelings from other people, and this can be a good thing, depending on what's going on. But in our modern day, a lot of people are just overwhelmed and stressed out, and if we are tapping into this and absorbing this energy, it's going to translate into our nervous system and circling back and adding all of this stuff together is because we are already at a lower threshold um, primed for burnout because of this hypersensitivity something like this this um, absorbing of energy might be enough to trigger us and this doesn't always look like something obvious or explainable but it's something to be aware of okay as a highly sensitive person or an empath it's important to know and understand and to be able to tap into what is ours and what is not ours um, you know, it's important to be able to put the boundaries up and it's also important for us to surround ourselves and put ourselves in a place, an environment where we can be calm. So I've had, uh, I had a patient a few years ago who's still a patient of mine now and when we originally started working together, we both lived in the city and she was highly, highly sensitive. You could tell right away um, she had eczema. She was she would just take on emotions and feelings and was trying to do everything for everybody else, even though she was going through this horrific issue uh, and would just take all of it on. And she, I started to work with her and I suspected that she was just a highly sensitive soul in general. And um, she was more sensitive to the toxins around her, to the environment. She was being constantly stimulated by Wi-Fi and the signals of the city and there was construction around and noise around and it was just all translating into her system and again because it's very primal the language it, it uh, understood or translated to was chaos and so because she was existing in this state of chaos her nervous system was just primed to freak out often on, and it did she would be hyperactive with her family with her relationships with her kids with her job with her work um, and then you know feeding into this behind the scenes just personally it was uh, it was a field of work that she wasn't passionate about leading it into more of a trigger and in layering in those subconscious uh, things that we don't, we can't quite quantify yet. And so she was existing in this fight, flight, or freeze response, and she would often go into the freeze response and she was actually starting to dissociate. So it was really, we were like to a point where we were working together for a while doing all the things and I was just like, you know, you need to, you need to get out, you need to uh, be somewhere calm, you need to ground and connect to the earth. And she knew that. she. She was actually the one that suggested it to me. You know, I need. I think I need to just go somewhere and be in the forest. And you know, often when people say that to me, it's like, yes, you probably should do that. Anyways, she did that, and she ended up moving away from the city and lives now in a small town uh, in in the U.S. mountains. And she is what she calls me, ninety nine point nine percent better. The rest is just due to getting old. But uh. It's amazing. She she would have this vibrating humming feeling. She would tell me constantly in her pelvis before, and she said that that disappeared uh, a few months after moving, which it had been there for years. And she just felt calmer. And her autoimmune disease. She was able to lower her medications. Not saying that uh, this is going to happen for everybody, and not saying that you should be doing this at all. Always please work with someone. But it was just uh, it was just a good example of showing that this hyper stimulation from our world does definitely feed into our physical body and manifest and can manifest as disease. So even if you're not able to sell your house and move away to the mountains, take advantage of those small peaceful moments. Better if you can connect with nature because uh, empaths have an innate connection with the world around us. 
even just go outside and putting your feet in the grass is a small small moment of a, a calm. This is how our nervous systems evolved and so it does actually recognize those electromagnetic signals from the ground and can help just calm things down. Lowering that threshold, lowering that propensity to react and to move into that freeze response and then working on the boundaries to help you uh, be able to navigate a world full of stressed out people. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about the understanding of your highly sensitive system and how you can prevent burning out in this modern world, which is not a cool or a good place to be. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Kayla. I am an empath and a highly sensitive person myself, and I am extremely passionate about helping modern, highly sensitive people step into their power and purpose. If this resonated with you, please give me a like, give me a follow and share, and I hope to see you around soon.